Okay, so uh, phone finding status about this vehicle's build. Like, this, this build cost me over $103,000. They sent me back here. Hello, this e email is to advise you that we will be starting the uplift on the transit van in the first week of September. Thank you. Okay, this is my return to them. The, I was told, okay, I was told it was a three to four week turnaround for the day I dropped it off. Now they're saying it's another, another month away. From that day, I dropped it off. And this is what I quote. I might be canceling it altogether as I'm not happy. So that's the outfitter place they're supposed to do the modifications. So they lied to me on the modifications. I just phoned my dealer guy and I told him straight out, I'm not waiting a month from now. I want that vehicle now. Like they had it for three weeks. So I'm not waiting for them to piss around. I told him it's a $130,000 investment here. It's not chum change. I said, you know, I dropped him an email. I told him straight out. I'm not happy, blah, blah, blah. And he said he's going to get on it right away. I said, you better get on it right away because I'm not too happy. So if they piss me around, I'm just going to say, put it that way. So it's not, I'm not too impressed. Everybody deals with you. They tell you yes. They tell you all these things, but they lie to you over and over. I'm just getting fed up with automotive dealers and uh, repairs and so on. But anyways, straight out to I'm, I'm putting, I already put 30000 down. I told the guy, send me the, a receipt for 3000 Still haven't got receipts. They, everybody dicks you around, right? It took me three months to chase this vehicle already. I'm over three months here just waiting for this vehicle. Shouldn't take that long. It's getting ridiculous here. And then people wonder why I'm getting pissed off and mad. Well, you're dealing with idiots like that all day long. But anyways, so if, if they piss me off, I'm not going to buy the vehicle. You know, uh, I'm not waiting that. I told the guy. He told me about three to four weeks. And I said, okay, I can do that. But I'm not going to wait longer. I wanted to intentionally take the vehicle out for a nice drive. Take it maybe to Okanagan. Maybe go camping. Just in it. Just to experience the vehicle. Break it in a little bit, right? Now, I'm not waiting until the first week of September. It's ridiculous. We got a lawnmower inside here. Looks like it's been in, it's in the guy's yard for a while. Buried in the trees. I'll give it a good home. Ah, oh, come on, every time. What's the problem? You keep forgetting. Because the sensor from the door is still off. I found a tire yesterday. Yeah, I never even filmed it. Tired wheel. It's actually a pretty, pretty heavy one. <laughs> this is too rusty looking. Corroded. Just more scrap metal. It's a heavy mortar, so it's good. I seen something else that way, but when I turned here, I saw this. So it's really hot today. It's 30 plus. This is exactly a temperature. Ah, huh, 33, 33 Celsius. It's definitely a hot day today. School desk here. Holy, holy, yeah, it's a globe. Waterloo, Ontario. There. Hmm. They throw out quite a bit of junk. These guys. The back-to-back -back desk might be worth restoring. Maybe. I might try to list that. Actually, it's got beautiful graphics there. Globe. Hmm. 
the kids out here and another desk in front. Kind of cool. This looks like almost like a, a cage or something. Hmm. Some sort of trap, maybe, or a cage, I don't know. Okay, I'm gonna go by. It looks like a police incident or something. Uh, it looks kind of unusual. I just want to see what's going on here. It's up the road here. I'll drop by. They got a cop in a back alley and a cop in front. I was curious what happened there. Looks like a scrapper truck too there in the driveway. I've never seen that truck there before, so I want to take a better look. So hold on. Okay, this is where some sort of incident happened here. Kind of curious what happened. Get the top jacked up everything there. So that's a scrapper truck there. Something. Well, I know that scrapper truck actually. So something happened there, I wonder what. It's a major crime because the cops in the back and in the front. Yeah, I know the guy who had the truck there was a young guy. This whole family there is there are scrappers. Hope nothing happened to the people there. But I remember they must have moved there recently because I never seen the truck there. First time I see the truck there because I always this is my kind of my circuit. I drive around here all the time because certain places don't scrap. There's a bucket there, it's the buckets. So I always check. That's why I find appliances all the time and weird things. I know the areas that people are always either rental houses or just people throw junk all the time. So yeah, I'm kind of concerned. I don't know. I'll have to listen to the news about that one. But when they put a cop in the back and the front, and they put, they put tape around it, that means uh, a forensic team's going to come there and do a, for, a forensic search of the property for evidence. Because we only have so many units that does evidence here. We're not like, a, you know, big cities and stuff. We, you know, the forensic could be cover more than one district, right? Possibly, I'm not sure, but... So that's why they'll say that that house could be sitting there like there for two days before the forensic team does whatever they have to do there. If it's some serious crime or something. So I don't know, it's kind of weird because the guy I knew was a pretty nice guy. So, see what happens there. Maybe we'll see the news or something. Usually when it's shootings and weird things or murders, you see that type of stuff, serious crimes. This appliance guy came out of nowhere here. I think he's the guy that's scooping appliances around the area. I'm thinking this guy here, because he re rebuilds them. Because his whole yard is full of appliances in the back. Just wondering why they disappeared so fast, like instantly. Usually they're not, not really like that in this area. Unless, but they never took the scrap, they don't take appliances. That's my tip off, that's a nice car there. Beaumont, maybe, or a Chevelle. Because usually if they take all the scrap metal, I can see it's a scrapper. But since they only took the appliance, a front load washer that means they're, they're, they're probably repair guys or something right so anyways yeah so i'm not too impressed with the truck there because like i say i've been waiting all this time it's been a month since they had it now they're saying they're going to work on it in a month oh they're tearing this house down power's cut windows is boarded huh that's new this guy puts a lot of scrap on they must be tearing down then oh a fire in the basement huh Unbelievable. Caught on fire. So yeah, so I'm not impressed because now if I'm waiting till first week of September, what two, three week, more weeks again after that? I told I told my guy I'm, I'm pissed off straight out. And I told him I might be canceling canceling the order completely. And I told the uh, I told my dealer guy, he said, Oh that could be a problem. I said, you know what? I wait all this time, you better have to talk to these guys because I'm fed up. You know, he said it'd be a three or four weeks. He said it would be. So I said fine. So I'm thinking, you know, it could be here, and it within one or two weeks. And I was hoping to go drive around. You know, in the Okanagan or something, or just drive around, maybe Meltek somewhere with the wife, or go to the island. It's a bike right there, but uh, I'll see the tires are flat. It just could be a junker. I don't know, sometimes kids, right? You don't know. I'll leave it for now. Looks like it's rideable, that's a problem. So I have to try to find my kid here if he can drive me. I'm waiting for my daughter to call me, but 
the truck the other trucks ready they put the parts on there but they charge you like 80 80 bucks or something with tax and then it, well, the air filter only takes two seconds but you said it was a half an hour labor so they charged me gst pst and maybe um who knows whatever on top of that maybe packing grease or something could charge me something extra but anyways um that'd be good um i talked to scrap bongo and i told him that uh if i get that job he could work with me on that job the one we did that inspection at the renovation so he said he's definitely into it so that's good so not much more on the streets here but you never know Okay, we'll get back to you. Okay, I got the truck back here. I just noticed it just uh, when I steer, if I steer straight, I have to steer just a slight angle, like maybe when they put it in, they didn't put it exactly straight, but it still drives good. Like the, I'm talking about the steering wheel position. See, I'm going straight. It's, it's a little bit offset. Usually it was like that, but I have to kind of offset a little bit. Because that thing is an arm that comes off your um, steering wheel and it goes into your uh, I'm not sure what it's called your steering uh, steering arm thing and it just kind of goes like this and this so what I like to say I notice it I have to just tilt the steering wheel a little bit this way to go straight but because if you're out just you know just a hair maybe it, it puts the steering wheel out of touch but anyways I didn't want to take a chance doing it myself because it's too you deal with that big truck, a commercial truck, right? These guys got the pro proper torquing tools and experience, right? But it started really strong, like it was really powerful. So we'll see. Um, so they're gonna, I'm gonna take my motorhome in there because it sounds like my, I wanna have a truck, that van. So I don't wanna do at least camping somewhere, do a little melt acting in the lake. So, Anyways, we'll get back to the yard. Okay, so what they did is they did an outside wash here, but you can see the metal looks more shinier than aluminum. So it's a little bit pricey, but I think... Focus, focus, I can... Okay, so the truck's back. So it looks a lot nicer with a shiny aluminum, but it's like some spots... Well, I've been sitting for a few, four or five days, but it's a little... It's like they kind of got sloppy at the end and left some of the dust and dirt, but... And then, uh... Some areas are really good. Some areas, like I say, could have been cleaned here. Like they gave up. Different areas, but it looks better. Uh, I can't remember if I had a dent here. I might have had one, but it's hard to tell. It looks fresh, but it's not because I don't, I don't remember seeing it there, but it could have been there. Just can't tell when it's dull. But the last guy who owned this truck was just a crappy driver. He had dents everywhere. I had to put bodywork in there and get it painted and everything, but it's looking better. Rims real shiny. But you know, I paid for cleanup and they, they get all the grease on here for the workers, right? But anyways, like I say, it started good, drove good. It just like the steering was out a bit. It could be something to do with the rod because if you're, if your steering's not 100% straight and you put it in on, on just a hair of an angle, I'm gonna notice it in the steering wheel. So I'm noticing that. So to me, it seems like it's out a hair, but it doesn't affect the driving. It's just you gotta tilt the steering like I showed in the video a little bit, but anyways, uh, happy to get it back. So I'll have to see what the guy comes up with that truck. Like I told him, like I say, I'm, I might back out. I'm not too impressed just because, you know, when they tell you something, you know, I could have, I could have just did something different, right? But is it, we're talking now, it's going to be five months to get a van. It doesn't even make sense. You know, but they, if they start in September, then I'm looking at the third week of September to get it back. And then in October, what, you can do nothing with van. I want to take it out for a burn and take it on the highway, you know, burn it out a bit, you know, have fun with it, see how it drives. So anyways, I might take the motorhome to that shop. I mean, they, they were kind of goofy at the start, but hey, uh, whatever, I told the guy. You know uh change the belt and i said this one has the belt has to be changed for sure because they told me three years ago the dealer said the belt should be changed and i never did nothing about it so because it was a special order they didn't have in stock that was the biggest issue 
Uh, it takes three weeks, they said, but maybe Amazon is a different story, which you might have to do that. But that one, you might have to be, I'm not sure if they're custom, some of them are custom, but I don't think so. But just to be sure, because they could put options on some of these trucks and sometimes the belts are different sizes, but I think there's one big dry belt in there. If I take that in there, I wouldn't mind them washing it, but I, I'm worried about if they wash it too aggressively, especially the roof, you know, they wreck up the rubber, rubber roof. So maybe, I might just do a wash myself, but I like the aluminum, what they did there is really nice. Uh, just, it was expensive, but I'm not sure if I paid the middleman, right, more money. But either way, it, it makes the truck a lot nicer, look, looks newer too. And the, the rust on the top of the roof, I think it's white paint. And I'll paint that myself. Just clean. I'm sure that dent was there. I've looked at some of my older videos, but um, just because it's so clean now, you can't tell. You, you see every little flaw now because it's too clean. So he told me no problem anytime I want to bring it. Um, he said sometimes the fuel goes back back up into the gas tank if you don't drive for a while or something he said. And it but I don't think the fuel pump works at all. It's not making any noise. Another guy told me by on the right hand side in the panel by your where the foot goes, there's a ball a ball there and it sits in this uh, thing. If it ever rolled over, it cuts your fuel line off automatically. It's a, it's a safety thing. And he says if someone goes in there and just kicks just the paneling on the right by your feet, it could nudge the ball loose from the contact. It's a steel ball, steel ball contact. That's for rollovers, right? So that could be a possibility. But I had an issue before, it didn't start. I called BCA and I said, hey, for the hell of let's try it. It started perfectly, but I took it to the shop. They went through it. That was three years ago and there was not an issue with it. He said, everything's fine. It's well maintained, looks good. Everything's 100%. And then when I sat for a, get, a little bit, I was going to start it. His batteries give me problems. It still wouldn't start. So now I'm going to, right now it's not starting. I'll just get a battery for it. At least with a battery, uh, I'll get, I'll put it in there. I know they have a, a charge battery instead of going, you know, getting them put a battery. I'll just get the battery, put it in myself, see what it does and get it towed. Like a PCA towed there. He says, no problem. They have forklifts. They can move the vehicle around if it doesn't start. And like I say, I may have to, maybe I could go camping salvage because there'll be a metal detecting hunt in Penticton that'll be the first week of September I believe after school's kids go back to school it'll be the weekend I'll go on that treasure hunt maybe it's in the sand with scoops and all that and prizes and tokens and all that I may do that and spend maybe two weeks camping or a week and a half or whatever we'll see all depends um, we'll see okay well not sure I think I'm gonna just call this video here it's just too hot I don't feel like doing anything it's 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 a, like a baking sun. It's not like a little sun. It's just uh, super hot. I just gotta load this junk here, just so that my van is empty at all times. Oh, I might actually take a picture of this thing and list this. I'm not sure what happened to my vacuum. I not vacuum. I my I had a, a, a lawnmower. That electrical one disappeared. It was sitting on the grass there. Disappeared. I don't know if Joe took it down. I told him to sell it, but. But in, anyways, uh, then uh, I was told another guy to sell, but so I'm not sure if my buddy sold it or Joel took it. Well, my buddy didn't want the bike. Well, he wanted the bike, but he didn't want to pay 20 bucks. So I said, hey man, 20 bucks is peanuts. Just the front assemblies were 20 bucks. Cranks on there, tires and wheels were 20 bucks. So this is the one I found. He actually, he actually fixed, fixes up my buddy, brother-in-law. He put screws in here and put a piece of plate here. So now it mounts. But he said it needs something. I'm not sure what he said, but... It still drives. So that's okay. I'll give my brother-in-law a list for like 40 bucks. As parts. Parts spike. And I'll get my 20 bucks anyways, and he'll get his 20 bucks. Right now, he said he drove, it drives fine, but... He said something, he needs something in the back of the wheel, I'm not sure what he's talking about. Oh, it needs, oh, that's nothing. It needs the, that bolt here that sticks on the wheel. You know how it's like, uh, you know how it snaps in here? He needs one of those things here. That's not a big deal, so actually the bike will still be good, actually, even though it's been modified. It'd be good for some person that needs a half piece of bike. Yeah, it's, it turns like this, and it's got the handle that locks it in there. Or it might even be just a nut. I think it's just a nut only. That's not a big deal. Hmm. 
a heavy, heavy bike, but it's, like I say, it's pretty heavy if you start, even though it's dirty, like, that's why I don't take nothing apart on these bikes, because you, they're paying for the shocks, they're paying for wheels, right, they're paying for the, all the steel assemblies, the shocks, when I sell dirty, I'm getting the same kind of price, instead of cleaning it, if I clean it, it's only like, five, six pounds, I sell dirty, it's like, 20 pounds of material, right, I throw that six bucks, so it's the same kind of money, you just lose a little bit on metal, who cares, but you're not doing nothing, that's the thing, but normally what I do is I'll, if the crank is aluminum, I'll cut it and leave the crank in, right, and then sell it with the crank, that's dirty, okay, well, like I say, see, that's only two times doing bottles and those milk jugs, just two times, and the first night was not that good, second one was okay, but when it's really good, I mean, bottles, like this is probably 100 bucks here, between all this, see that? 100 bucks, see? That's so fast. And then my bin. But I want to put in the dishwasher there, I got the fridge I want to put in, and then all this stuff will go in. That's why I threw it here, because when I got an inspection, I got to be quick. You know, I can't fool around, because sometimes these houses take three, four hours. You know, so I have to be thorough, I have to make notes, I have to do pictures, drawings, sample locations, there's so much involved, right? Now there's more testing materials that we never tested before. They're just fabricating, just work, that's all they're doing. You're testing stuff that doesn't even, doesn't even contain asbestos, but that's what they're doing, right? So I thought maybe dishwasher here, fridge laying down flat, put everything in, and then put all this stuff in, cut that table up. And then maybe a bunch of other things, strip all this type of stuff, and just kind of fill it in here. So I think I, I, I can have three quarters of bin for sure, maybe a little more. And like I say, it's always, always adds up, right? More and more all the time. This one's full. Let's have people down. You can see all the small stuff is all filler. See what I'm saying? Two times street scrapping. Look at all this material, all this aluminum here, aluminum there. The tin foil plates out of it's probably 20 pounds of tin foil plates, and then cat cat cans and spam tins, about 20 pounds of aluminum. So you got all 17, 18 dollars just on that a couple times, right? Anyways, enough of rambling. I'm taking a picture of this desk. I think that's worth selling. Someone will want it. So. Even for a plant stand, right there, a plant stand. That'll work. Okay, you guys have a great day. Thanks for watching. There's a dryer here. I'm gonna knock on the door. I saw a bike up the road too, so knock on the door. Free service. Okay, hold on for a second. Okay, he said it's his sister's, but he's gonna ask his sister and I'll put a little sign on there and I'll grab it after that. But uh, it's obviously junk. You don't leave a dryer sitting in, in the weather, but. You know, I see it, it's new, it has been there that I've noticed, but there's a bike up the corner here. I'll take a quiz, quick whiz up there and grab it. Looks like it's on the edge of the curb there. This one's a dangerous hill, it's kind of a blind spot there. Okay, so it's right here in the corner. Sitting like like a junker, but oh, I think it might say free. It does say free. It's perfect. It's the way I like finding them. Then you know, 100%. It's not some kid's bike or something, right? Let me just throw it in here. Hmm, could be aluminum frame. It's hard to say. Looks a bit like a real cheap bike, steel. But hey, that's okay. Heavier the better. That's a steel one. Oh, it's heavy. 40, 45 pounds. Aluminum wheels. That's good. Steel crank. Okay, we're coming down here. Aluminum chairs. Two of them. half aluminum I think it's something that's actually really heavy but it is aluminum probably got a steel post that's okay this one's obviously wrecked 
surprising how heavy it is. But it looks aluminum. That one anyways, you can see it's peeling off. Okay, well, that's a bonus. See, that's like the van right there. That's exactly what it looks like. That's that length, which is a good length. We'll see what, hopefully, the pressure I put on them. We'll get done faster, junk bike here. Broken uh, thing, seat missing. Obviously a junker. And like I say, they're heavy little bikes. We got some speakers here. Well, speakers are amplified, so by a transformer in there and stuff, it's sort of heavy. It's a little more. I was gonna cut the video off before, but I figured, you know, it'll buzz around a little bit. Good thing is the air conditioner works okay, otherwise I'd be screwed in this van. Even though the window's down, now what's really bugging me is this van is now the switch. The ones that are replaced here, the switches are all wonky. They're just like loose. See how tight? Uh, I just don't know if they snapped out or what's going on. So, but they somewhat work a little bit. And I'm not even sure if I threw the other switches away. I can't remember if I did or did a scrap and what I do with them. So, one thing after the other, right? But uh, there's at least there's stuff out there, a little bit here and there. That for aluminum, even with the AC, when I put the AC on, it hesitates. I gotta give it lots of fuel to move up the hill here. It struggles this little, little red. Okay. I don't think I have to take the, the bike out and put this barbecue, but I think I have to first take the wheels off that big bike and then get the barbecue ready. So I have to head back twice. Once I take the wheels off, it gives me more room. You give me a second here. I won't close, but hey, did it. Okay, right on. There's so much scrap everywhere, it's never ending. Okay, lots in there. You don't know what pops up. Sometimes you find small stuff. Maybe the barbecue is stainless steel, who knows, probably not, but it's okay. I'll cut it up and put it in the bin. You cruise around, right? That's why I want a good vehicle where I can load, right? Nice lift there, so it's not hard on your back or nothing. See, all this place is a number here. They're all going to be condos here soon. This whole area. Land, all land assemblies. A lot of them are sold out already. So there's a good, good properties here for... There'll be a lot of scrap coming up and people throwing stuff out when they move. numbered 
you have to watch the garbage bags sometimes the bottles they gotta look a certain way if the if it looks like a certain way I'd, I'll, I'll get out but sometimes they're half garbage mixed in so that's gonna be all all condos this is gonna be all condos here this block's gonna come out they're already uh which one okay right there is the big signs already right all this is developed proposals so that duplex I sold was just behind here that's probably if I'd have waited long enough probably worth a couple million dollars but that, it doesn't really matter because I made money you know I got a good yard I made money made profit there that's a I made probably nine hundred thousand on that job or that house and the house next door I think I made um, well, for the, when I purchased it, so I made 1.1 million or something. So I must have made two million in three years. So, for real estate, that's where the money is. Real estate, there's no money in working, if you know what I mean. But real estate got too expensive. You can't, you can't buy it here now. These are all factored into condos now. So the price has gone quite a bit higher. Right? Is that, the, is that bottles there? Yeah, bottles for me. Told you. See you later. The bottles come. Turn off, turn on. I have to get the clapper. Open up. So, people are nice enough to put in a bag like that. Probably, I don't know, about 50, who knows. But I'll show you down the road here. This whole block's already started to come out. And like I say, they wanted two million. Two, two, over two million right now for my duplex, but it's it's too expensive right now. They won't gonna pay that kind of money, but they paid 1.284 for it. See, look at this all this land here. These are all houses here with you know bigger lots. Like my property is all rails here. Look at that. My lot was 70 by 140. My duplex, so it was a pretty good lot. I, I want to buy want to buy a property next door. I was gonna buy one years ago, but. I just spent money stupidly. I could have bought one. You know how it is. You buy just toys and stuff. You know, go on trips and holidays all the time. Spend big money, right? Two trips a year. They add up, right? Ever since COVID, man, it was good for me because I made I could save money. I didn't, I didn't spend money and then limited the travel. So then I was good. So that was okay. But I still like to travel. I was like traveling. So that's the land I want to show you over there. But that one... It's already a big parcel and there'll be all condos and my duplex is just beyond here oh here's just, these chairs are still here barber chairs or, or hairdresser chairs well it could be i just don't know they got so much junk in that yard but if i had a lift i would knock on the door like those are probably at least 200 pounds each because they're weighted weighted because they, they can't bounce right that's been there for already three weeks since I last noticed it. It's got junk in your cars and so you just don't know there's something there. There's a little kids thing there. So so for now, like these houses are a lot of renters, so they're coming and going. See they're all run down properties, no one's doing nothing here. So all gonna be condos. this thing here nothing special but cleans the neighborhood up what's left of this neighborhood I'll go leave the door open so say I could just drive all the time find stuff I don't have to go far I'm just going like within a few kilometers in circles when, when, when it's good it's good There's this little thing here, the plastic kind of on it. I'll show you the next group of condos. This whole block here is coming out. And you can see actual high rises coming right there. That's your downtown center. But this will be all your. See, this whole block's coming out here. There's condos there that started. 
and this guy here is building the high rise over here he's building like three or four high rises it's east Indian company but they seem like good people that are good old an open house here and you have hot dogs and food for everybody it was pretty good but it's obviously they're paying the city off to, to get density but usually how it works this used to be a school here they tore down this is coming out this whole block here this used to be a school now it's all it's all all druggies in there and party people and they sell drugs in there and but uh once in a while cops bust them all but they just they lounge around all day there selling still and dope but i used to be a school years ago we're talking about 20 years ago there's a condos here are old these original these are from six, late 60s 70s these ones these guys built here which is kind of waste because this whole block these blocks are all coming out eventually they just recently built and one guy called steve fonio he did the marathon of hope he got beat up in, in this house here he lived in here and he ended up dying they beat him up in there he had he had cancer and had just like terry fox he was actually a pretty good guy i met him one time at a job I thought he was a good guy but we got messed in, messed up with the wrong people and who knows what happened but he got beat up and passed away so that's too bad that's my duplex here i owed got the kelso flag on there so but they want two million which is not going to sell but the house here but this it's all coming out here anyways and if you look behind there this one sold before my duplex for two million but it's a double lot twice the size believe it or not sold for two million and people don't realize, you know, I say prices, they think I'm crazy. They can buy houses way nicer in the States or dirt cheap. But that's what you're paying for land and high taxes here. You're not really getting much, to be honest. Oh my God, there's the traffic here. Mm. You know, it's all high taxes here. So I'll, I'll, go, I'll go this way. I think you, you stop. Okay, I want to show you in here this way here these are all places i find i find trash all the time but all this area is coming out here this whole stretch of land so they built a couple of new houses here but they're not gonna last long because eventually they'll buy them all out they paid like a million dollars for property 1.2 whatever they did i tested that one here that one there so i had one job in this area but as you look here all the these are all for land assemblies they're all coming out all these lands here this whole neighborhood to be gone it's all gonna be gone in a matter of time see that's one big parcel land right now real estate's the craps that's why it's not selling but it probably will sell eventually this complex coming out here there's an old old folks home they're putting condos here it's all full of asbestos i don't know how much but some drywall some other stuff we have been working there for about a month and a half but it shows you everything's coming out it's all gonna be all gone that's what i'm saying to be honest i like the old mon paul restaurants but they've all been pushed out to high rises and you know all this here is coming out and if you look over here this is robert picton he owned part of his property the sewer killer his family owns that property there that's been sitting there for years i'm not why it's sitting there they have done nothing for the last 25 years there See, all these lots are just ready to come out all this you see that it's like we're in a ghetto but in actual fact is in about 10 years it's going to transform big time just put my seatbelt on it's going to transform big time and they're planning about 25 to 30 high rises along this king george stretch they've put about 10 in already but it was up to 30 to 40 hours wcb told me there and they're also this is coming out here too it's already advertised see bridge city then here all these condos going that way so that's what i say it pushes everybody out this used to be howard johnson hotel what my one of my brothers lived there that's a recovery place where they give you a place to live check on you and babysit you type thing but that's where he lives but he was homeless before so it's a good shelter for him so that will stay for quite a while just because they built a new wing on there so because they're making big money you probably charge the government a thousand dollars a person or more and they get a small allowance and i think they get a bag of lunch or something i'm not sure joe said right this is all condos here that's what i'm showing you I'm showing you how much it was a scooter right there i'm just showing you how much development is going to be on here it's mind-boggling how much it's going to be you know built up it's just crazy and i don't know who's paying for all this and who's living here because these units are about 800 900 000, maybe a million now hard to say they were hard to sell but they were around 800 
they had problems selling but now i think most of them are sold but they have a couple more phases coming still gotta go pick that scooter up but it shows you like the development is really really crazy developments here and that's not just surrey that's it could be vancouver it could be everywhere it's their buildings like mad the housing market is not that great but the condo market seems to be for now but i think that's all going to end all these big projects that are sitting they're not going to be developed yet because who could finance who could get a mortgage with you know 70 percent interest if some people are paying 10 percent just because the credit's lousy or a big, big down payment no one has the money that i know well someone has but not me well i wouldn't say i don't but i wouldn't spend that kind of money anyways i'm not stupid because i know what land was cheap before i'm not going to go overspend see they put, they put the scooter right there missing wheel we know it's we know it's trash That's how my brother made a lot of money in real estate over the years, buying lots for 300000 and going up 500 700 to keep going up higher and higher. Oh, it's got a wheel on there. That looks like a junker anyways. Oh, yeah, it's just all falling apart. It's a little junk. Okay, I think I'm calling a video here. I think we uh, got to the point. There are more condos here too, right? And they'll eventually go down a hill and they'll go that way here. Then they go all this way here. That's their SkyTrain line. And what they're doing is, they call them 15-minute cities. Basically what it is, every 15 minutes is SkyTrain station. It's density, high-rises, condos. They want you in a bubble so they can control you, right? They had stupid talk where they can limit you, your travel. Maybe one day it might come to that, to that but anyways, the parking brake so that's why it's not going nowhere. But, uh, you know, it's amazing how much it changed over my in the last 20 years. I've been up here for over 20 years, but this will be developed here eventually here in a slope. So they went here, but I'm not sure there could be something here sensitive or ravines or something. Condos coming in here, houses, condos. And then like I say, everywhere it's being developed. All this flat area here now is another area that's going to be developed big time. Here's another one here, uh, electric company, bicycle, an uh, electric motorcycle company was supposed to move here. The company I used to work for built it, Boza. And for some reason they went to California instead, which they were stupid, they're gonna be screwed going to California. But anyways, they were gonna, they built the factory here, but they never never occupied it, which I find strange. Uh, it was Damon, yeah, Damon Motorcycles, their electric bike company, they went to California, I think it's called Damon. But that's what they did. They built this huge factory here. They just built that church here not too, too long ago. New Age Church. But this warehouse must cost a fortune. And it was an old scrap here. It was um, Scott Road Trading was here. And what happened was now they're stuck with this development here, which is probably useless because it's not designed. The, they could have put a commercial with multi units. Now you have a piece of land. It must be a, a dispute or something, a lawsuit, because. You build something for someone, and next thing, the plan, they could have put commercial units in there and had maybe, I don't know, different layouts, two or three buildings here with their own docks and old, own roll-up doors and offices. Now it's one big stupid thing. So maybe Tesla would go there. But Tesla's already uh, here, already uh, up here on Scott Road, Tesla factory, where they do the repairs. So I thought I'd give you a little, you know, a little bit of a look of what, what we're dealing with in our city here, but... All this land's all, all going. There'll be industrial here mostly. Uh, warehouse industrial, and small family manufacturing, but no real manufacturers, just stupid little things, you know, like maintenance companies and just small tech things. Nothing like we have no uh, real factories here, like you see in maybe in the U.S. and I'm not sure how much is in the U.S. but very little here. You might see some in Alberta or maybe Ontario, but really nothing here. This is uh, the church that I was going to show you this. Central City Brewery. They made so much money, the brewery. They actually built another building next to it. That's how much money. They These are some microbreweries. Red Racer. They make so much money, they built another one here. Central City Breweries. Shows you how much money these microbreweries are making. That's where all the kegs are stored in the windows. John McKinnon there. This is a new... They could build something like this, I was thinking. They would have did good. 
built this type of co complex where they have their own bay doors. Now they have a big giant warehouse which could could make money or could lose money, right? The bays are behind, but the storefronts are here, right? I'll give you a little tour here of our beautiful city. What's left of our city? A little bit of trucking, trucking in here. This is guys that did the repair on my truck. ARL is um so anyway I don't know what to say I wasn't happy on a few things about that but you know I need a repair shop at Lago Street I can't I need someone close but you know I my disputing well he overpriced the parts he charged me basically two hundred dollars more for one part which I didn't know I would have never checked I just didn't understand he said it would fail if I got it pulled over by DOT, it'd be taken off the road. So I wanted to know what it was. So I did a search and see what it was, and I wanted to know what the price is. He quoted me like six eighteen or something like that. I got four ninety seven quote, but my buddy works there. I got his. I got the dealer price, so I got it for four twenty two. So I, and like I say, I saved almost two hundred dollars just out of one part. So they installed it for like whatever it was eighty bucks or whatever with the tax. But it shows you. And then if you look in here, this is where I kind of live in my other, other area. I need a park here. Not sure if they could build in this area, but all this is going to be developed here. It's going to be like um, industrial warehouses or something like that. Something similar to what they built here recently. This is all the trees covered up, but there's a warehouse in there. Like multiple unit warehouse. But all this is going to be developed here. All this here. Right? Right along the stretch here. And it's going to cover this whole area. But I'm, I'm sure it's going to be industrial type of stuff. Just a little bit industrial here. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this crazy tour. Hope you're seeing stuff. I'm not sure how my GoPro is showing. But just trying to, you know, give you a feel of my city. I like I like when people drive around and show a little bit. Talk a little bit. and Because I'm interested in travel. I like traveling. When I see the United States, I get my wife to drive. I'm the... I view and look at stuff. That's my thrill is watching and looking at scenery, you know, and infrastructure. Anyways, have a great day. Thanks for watching.